Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve a problem, minimum increment to make array unique. Suppose we're given an array like this one. We want to make every single value in the array unique. So we want to eliminate duplicates, but we can only do that by taking an individual element. For example, we have two occurrences of this value. So to remove duplicates, we can only increment one of these. So suppose I take this one and I increment it now to be two. Okay, well, we solved the problem. There's only a single one now, but it looks like we have three occurrences of the value two. So this is gonna be an interesting problem to solve. I'm going to show you two ways. One is going to involve sorting, and that is going to be an n log n solution. And I'm going to show you a second one, which is kind of similar to counting sort. I guess it more or less is counting sort. We're going to be implementing that, but that pretty much solves the problem for us as well. And that is going to be a bit more interesting in terms of time complexity. It's going to be n plus whatever the max element in the input is, and that's going to be a fun one to explain. So let's start with the first one. As you can see, the problem isn't that we have to find the duplicates and then increment some values to eliminate duplicates, but then we might end up with even more duplicates. So let's try to do this in an organized way. The reason I'm going to take the input and sort it, as you can see, we're running into a problem, but sorting will fix that problem. And I want to show you why that is. So if I take the original input and sort it, we're going to get something like this. I want to do a two pointer technique. I want to compare adjacent values because given that we've sorted this, now it's very easy to identify duplicate values because duplicates are going to be right next to each other. Okay, now we found some. These are the exact same value. We're going to increment one of them. I'm going to choose to increment the one on the right. And the reason for that is going to become clear because when I take this one and now I increment it to two. Now when we shift, we want to compare these two values. So we want to be done with this one. That's why I'm leaving it as is, because the one that we increment now could potentially be the same as the next one that we're looking at. Now, when we look at these two values, I'm going to see that they're the same and I'm going to choose to increment the one on the right. So now this one is going to be three, but this is actually even more interesting because now when you look at the remaining values, we have a three here, we have a two here, and we have another three here. They're not all the same. Like now we ran into a situation where duplicate values are actually not adjacent to each other, but that's okay because this actually is solvable for us because we kind of know that Every value up until here is going to be in ascending order. And we also know that the values here are in ascending order. Now, it could have been a situation like this. This is the simple situation. Imagine if these three remaining numbers were something like 7, 8, 9. We would look at these two values and we'd see, OK, this value is obviously greater than the value on the left. That's fine. I mean, they're in sorted order. We expect some of the values to be greater than the other. So this is fine. We would just skip this and then move to the next position and then just continue. Now, the other situation might be, what if all of these were threes? Well, obviously, when they're equal, we got to increment one of them. We're choosing to increment the one on the right. Now, the other case is this, the case that we currently have, where actually this value value is less than the value on the left. This would only have occurred if we took this element and incremented it, right? So the fact that this element is larger than this one implies that this one was incremented in the past. And the only reason we would have incremented this one is if it had a duplicate with the value over there. So the fact that this value here, like our pointer is here, is less than the value over here implies that this one is actually a duplicate of some value that we've already seen in the past. Therefore, we're going to increment this value. But as you can see, we're not just going to increment it once. We want it to be at least one greater than this value. So what we're actually going to do is take this value too, subtract the value on the left, which is going to give us a delta of one. So actually, I guess the better way to do it would be to take this value and subtract the value on the right, because we're finding the difference between these two values. That's going to give us a one. So we're going to take this and add it to this so that they're the same. So this will be a three. But then we want to increment it one more after that. 
So not just the difference between them, but also a plus one so that this is actually different from the value to the left of it. So this will end up being a four. Now we're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to look at these two values. They're not the same, but this one is smaller than the one on the left. Therefore, we take the difference between them. That's one and add that here and then also add a plus one. So this will be five now. Now we compare the last two and there's nothing for us to do. This one is already greater than the value over here. So if you were keeping track of how many times we had to increment, it's not just the number of times we increment, but uh, this one obviously was incremented once. This one was incremented once. This one was incremented twice and this one was incremented twice. The total was six. So this is just the classic sorting solution for this problem and log n time. So let's code it up. I'm going to take the input and sort it in ascending order. I'm going to have a variable to keep track of how many times we increment. That's going to be my result. And that's what I'm going to return. And then I'm going to do the two pointer technique, but I'm actually not going to have two separate variables because we know the two pointers are always just going to be comparing adjacent values. So let's do something like this for I in the range starting at one and the length of nums, because I'm going to compare the value on the left, which is I minus one with the value to the right, which is at pointer I. So remember, if the value on the right is actually less than or equal to the value on the left, that's when there's a problem. In that case, we want to increment. We want to update our result, not just by one, but also the difference between these two values. If you're scared, if you want to be defensive, you can take the absolute value difference between them, something like this. But remember, with this comparison, if one of them is greater, we know which one is going to be greater. It's going to be this one. So if we want to get rid of the absolute value, let's take this value and subtract from it the other value, and then we can get rid of this absolute value. So this is just us updating the result. Like this is how many times we have to increment the value here so that it's different from the value to the left of it. Now, what is that value going to be now? That's the easier calculation. We're now going to replace nums of i with the value to the left of it plus one. So i minus one plus one. And that's pretty much the entire solution. I have technically one variable, but it's obviously a two pointer solution. We're comparing two adjacent values. So let me just run this. As you can see, it works and it's pretty efficient. Now let's look at the other one. So we can apply this idea, this concept of sorting and actually do something a bit more clever. So the interesting thing about the solution I'm going to show you now is actually that it's a little bit easier to understand. It might actually be more intuitive for you. Consider us using a hash map or you could consider like an array. But the key is going to be the value on the left. And here it's going to be the count of that particular value. So initially, we're just going to take this input array. We're actually not going to have the sorted version. So consider just the original, but I have it drawn here just for readability. So we're going to take every value and get the count of it. So one has a count of two, two has a count of two, three has a count of one and seven has a count of of one. So the idea now is same as before, but we're going to do it sort of in groups, in buckets or whatever you want to call it. So we start at the smallest key, but we might not necessarily know what that is. So we know that the smallest value we could have, I think, in the input is the values are going to be somewhere in the range from zero to 10,000 or 100,000, something like that. So we're going to do that. We're going to iterate over all the possible values here. So starting at one, we're going to look at the count. OK, the problem is the count is greater than one. We have duplicates. So what do we do? Well, we're going to take that duplicate, just the extra one. So how many duplicates do we have? Well, we have two elements. We subtract one and then we have one extra element is what we're calling it. We have one extra copy of this value. So we're going to just move it to the next bucket. In this case, that's two, the next group. So this will be one now because we don't want duplicates, but we're going to move that duplicate here. So there's actually going to be three copies of two. Now, what did it take for us to do that? It just took one operation because we only had one extra element. So we just had to increment that extra element by one. So now we have the value two and we have three copies of that value. So we have two extra 
elements. So we're going to take those two extra elements and move them to the next group. They're going to be here now. So I'm adding two to this group and I'm subtracting two from this group. How many total operations did it take for us to move those two extras to the next group? It took two. However many extras we have, that's how many operations it's going to take for us. Now, once again, we're here and we have extras. We have two extras, so we're going to move those two. We're going to have one copy of three remaining. And those two extras are actually not going to be moved to seven. They're going to be moved to four. So maybe I should have left more space here, but hopefully you get the idea that four now originally it had zero. We didn't have any fours, but now we're going to have two of them. We have two copies of the value four and I'm actually going to redraw this. So we had zero fours. Now we're going to have two of them. OK, now we go to the next group. How many extra fours do we have? Well, it looks like we have one extra four. So we only want one to be here. So we're going to move that extra to be a five now. So there's going to be one five. And now we're going to go down here. Five actually doesn't have any extras like we have exactly one five. That's good. We don't want extras. We only want at most a single one. So this is good. We don't have to do anything here. And then we're going to go to six. Six, actually, there aren't any of those. So that's fine as well. We don't need to have a copy of every single element. And then we're going to go to seven. Seven, there's just a single one. That's good as well. Nothing for us to do here. At this point, we're pretty much done. How many operations did you count? Well, we moved one copy of one here. So that was a plus one. We moved two of these to here. And then we took two of these and moved them down here. And then we took one of these and moved them here. So if you add all those up, we get six. And that is the result. Now, you might recognize that there is kind of an issue with how we do this in memory. Like when I originally said that the values in the input, they are going to be somewhere in the range from zero to 100,000. So does that mean we could just iterate over all possible keys here from zero to 100,000? Actually, no, because consider this input like this is the max value in like the array. That's the max possible value. Imagine we have, let's say, two copies of these or maybe even three copies of 100,000. That's the entire array. We have three copies of 100,000. Well, what we're going to end up doing here is iterating from zero to 100,000. We're going to see, OK, we have three copies of 100,000, right? So 100K is going to be here. We have three of them. And then we're going to move two of them to the next one. So 100K plus one. I know this is getting kind of messy, but we're going to have two of them here now. Well, if we only iterate from zero to 100,000, we're going to miss the next one. And then that one should technically go down to 100K plus two. So the concept here is that whatever the max value happens to be, we could have n duplicates of it, where n is the size of the array. So if we really want to go through every possible key, what we should do is go from zero up until 100K plus N, where N is the size of the array. This way we won't miss anything. And also, if you want to be even more clever, you recognize that we don't always have to use 100K. We could just find whatever the max value in the input happens to be. In this case, it's seven and use that instead. So technically, we will iterate from N plus whatever the max value is. So from zero up until N plus the max value in the input because that max value in this case, seven, maybe it showed up six times because that's the size of the array. So in that case, we would want to go from N, which is six plus the max value, which is 13, because to eliminate duplicates from here, we're going to need something like that, right? We're going to need this to be an eight, this to be a nine, and then this to be a 10, 11, 12. So that's the math behind what I'm showing you. It's kind of a minor optimization, but this is the best way to do it. And I know you guys like to see that solution. There are many ways to code this up. We could take like an array and call it count and then just use that to store the counts of every single element. In Python, though, we can use something called a counter, which is going to do exactly that, except it's going to use like a hash map under the hood. I could write out the you know few lines of code it takes to do this, but all we're doing is just counting the occurrence of every element in the input. I'm going to have a variable for result once again, and that's what we're going to be returning. 
But now to actually compute that, we're going to go for i in range. This is what I was talking about. We're going to go from zero up until the length of nums plus the max value in nums. So it's going to be this length plus max. Now we don't have to specifically say we're starting at zero. So I'm just going to get rid of this implicitly. It'll start at zero anyway. We're good here. Now, if the count is greater than one, that's when we have a problem. So let's just check, is the count of this greater than one? Okay, it is. That means we have some extras. How many extras? We'll take the count and subtract one. We have this many extra. So we're gonna take those extras and move them to the next group. We're gonna go to count I plus one and add those extra copies there. Now for us to do that, it's gonna take some operations, some incrementing operations. How many values are we gonna increment? This many. And we're only gonna increment each by one. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take the result, add to it, extra whatever extra happens to be that's how many times we had to increment that's the entire code let's run it as you can see on the left it works it's technically less efficient and that's because in most cases when the input size is small this is actually going to be less efficient because the max number could be big even on a small input array so we're going to iterate unnecessarily so that's kind of how it usually is with counting sort but we've had a lot of counting sort problems lately so i wanted to show you this solution anyway if you found this helpful, check out neatcode.io for a lot more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.